on fundamental levels, things are significantly better, right? So, uh, 94, you've got SABC as the biggest and pretty much only broadcast show in town. Uh, very real threat, fears about how they'll cover issues. And on some level, there's a parallel with that today, right? About the public broadcaster and how they're going to cover and report on these things. Like most things in South Africa, there's a complete contradictory right? a contradiction, right? Which is that on so many levels, things are so much worse. Uh, the state of our media today is perilous. You know, they're facing an extinction event because of their business uh, models of failing or failed. Um, the number of journalists has gone down massively. Uh, you know, so there are hardly any journalists, there are fewer newsrooms, the news organizations are struggling. Uh, and now with the rise of AI, there's this very real and legitimate fear that journalism itself is, is, is going to no longer be necessary. Uh, Google, we know, is already experimenting by generating local news stories for people completely through AI and in fact trying to rope in news organizations to check those and see if they'd run those things. So there's a, a very real sense in which journalism now is completely awful and there's very little hope. But if you go back to where we were in 1993 to 94, which is when we started, you know, our environment then was on some levels quite parallel to, to where, where it is now. Sure, there were a lot more uh, journalists in newsrooms, particularly SABC, but what there wasn't then was any real sense or any sense actually of what rights mean, of why journalism and why media freedom really matters, right? Because there was this thing we were just building up to getting a constitution, to actually having freedom of expression protected for the first time uh, in our country's history. So it, you look at the where we were and where we are now, and on so many levels, as I said, things are terrible, but on fundamental levels, things are significantly better, right? So uh, 94, you've got SABC as the biggest and pretty much only broadcast show in town. Uh, very real threat, fears about how they'll cover issues. And on some level, there's a parallel with that today, right? About the public broadcaster and how they're gonna cover and report on these things. But what's important is that SABC is actually a public broadcaster. There's certain things in the editorial policies. There's certain legal challenges. So if you look at the judicial framework for our media, consistently again and again and again, we score incredibly highly globally for the manner in which our judicial framework, our precedent takes on and protects media, media freedom. And we've been making, the, making sure that those changes occur. And then you get a massive loss of journalists over that period, but you also start to see recognition that actually we've moved out of a period of extreme racism, extreme sexism, misogyny, and we're now trying to operate in a democratic framework. And that was a huge challenge for our media. So if you go back, for example, it was common for media to report on domestic violence, even things like rape as a lover's quarrel, right, where uh, the experiences of women was denigrated and undermined and marginalized. I remember one of the headlines in uh, the Sunday Times was about the trauma that a man experienced having to witness his wife getting raped. Like the focus was on the man's trauma, and not actually on the woman's trauma who was being raped during this home invasion, right? So that kind of thing now, we don't see that sort of reporting now. You know, if you look at the way that it's reported and you look at something like gender-based violence where it wasn't an issue, today it's an issue and it's consistently and reported in an ongoing manner. So that is a significant shift from 30 years ago to where we are now. If you look at the way race and racism itself is reported, you know, all of our media now, without fail, have got a very clear and frankly biased in a good way agenda around human rights and race and racism and xenophobia so unlike america for example we don't have media here that are openly xenophobic we don't have media here that are openly sexist or patriarchal right they all have 
a clear and expressed expression of support for our constitution. And that's quite an amazing thing, you know, for a country like ours, which has got the kind of deep fracture lines like ours to do that.